Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk about three buzzer patterns that I think you're all going to love. Now the buzzer is the pupa stage of the midge, um, which is a non-biting mosquito. Now these flies catch numerous fish all over the country, all over the world, uh, on still waters and rivers. Um, and what we're going to do today is look at three black buzzer patterns that work in different stages of the water column um, and catch fish all the same. So these are three of my favourite patterns. The first of the three that we're going to look to tie today is the skinny black buzzer. So this um, is really the early pupa stage of the buzzer itself. So um, really it's quite a, an easy fly to tie. Um, so we're going to cover that one um, for you. A beginner fly tyres, you only need a few handful of materials um, and you can tie all of these three really. Um, next up is our emerger or suspender buzzer, which is the next stage in the buzzer's life cycle. Um, it's just about starting to hatch. Um, you can see this foam cube on the top um, pulls the fly to the surface and the rest of the body hangs beneath the surface of the water. Finally, is something that probably most of you recognise, it's our shipman's buzzer. Now this shipman's buzzer um, is the last stage of the pupa before hatching, really. It sits on the top film of the water and simulates the fly uh, crawling out of its shuck, um, trying to get up and free into its adult life stage. Um, so yeah, you need to gink these up quite a lot, any sort of fly treatment really. Um, and it'll float on the top. As I say, all three of these flies are really simple to tie. You only need a handful of materials and away you go. The first fly we're going to tie today is our skinny buzzer. The first thing you need is a hook. This is a size 12 midge hook. Um, so what we need for this is black tying thread, um, some antron. You only need a tiny bit of this. Um, any colour you like, I go for this red colour because that's quite a nice attractive colour. Um, and some oval tinsel. So this, I use the oval because it creates a nice separation between the sections of the fly. Um, looks more like a real one and, and flat tinsel for this particular pattern. Right then, so first thing we do is we catch on our thread. and work our way, touching turns, down to just past the bend of the hook. So we have a little bit of that curve going on. Trim that off. Right, so we need a section of the ribbing material. So I'll just take a cut in of our tinsel here. And what I'm gonna do is tie this in, just a couple of wraps to lock it in, and then I'll work back up towards the eye of the hook. And then back down again, touching turns, trying to cover as much of this tinsel as we can. and back up again. So really your body material here on this fly is the thread itself. And I'll leave that there. A couple more turns for now. Right then, so I'm going to counter wrap this around our hook. Just putting my finger on top just to trap it in place to stop any of these turns from slipping so we get a nice even spread that slips slightly there just move that and once more around and then what we'll do is go twice over with the tying thread just to lock that in place again three times slipped a little bit pull that back and then we can cut that off. That's the main body of the fly done. 
So now what we're doing is we build, we're building our head. So lay down quite a lot of material here for a start. We'll just cover up that end of that tinsel, make sure that it's locked in place. Spread out these um, loops. And then we need a small amount of our Antron. So only really need an inch or so, a couple of inches. I'll take a couple of inches there. Just make sure there are no raggy ends. Cut those off. And what we're going to do here, we'll do a pinch wrap, just another turn, and then we'll tease that back just to minimise the amount on show. And then we'll start to build our head up. So what we're trying to do is create the breather tubes on the edge of the buzzer. So we need a decent sized head here, so we'll build a nice shape up, teardrop shape, with the tying thread. Give it plenty, just to make it nice and fat. Always remembering that you need to leave room at the head of the hook, near the eye, to do your whip finish at the end. Something I was always caught out with when I was a child learning to tie flies, is that I'd always run out of room to tie the whip finish. Makes it really awkward to tie the fly onto your fly line. Um, right then, so what we do next, so what we do now, now we've got this tied to the front of the hook is take our scissors or a bodkin, split the antron down the middle. So we've got two sections. And what we do then is wrap it round the head so you've almost got cheeks. And then pinch with your forefinger and thumb. Another little pinch wrap round there just to Got one come free. Pinch wrap round there just to lock it in place, and you'll find we've got in effect cheeks. Just pull that tight and pull our tying thread tighter. Then, what we can do, give it a few more turns. Doesn't matter if these stand up because it is effect a breather tube. Um, it looks more natural. We can just snip that off just above where our tying thread is. Final stage now. Penultimate stage really. Take our whip finish tool. One, two, three. Oh. And do a second whip finish. One, two, three. Pull everything tight. Let's get rid of our tying thread there. One little hair from the antron that's slightly errant, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then we've just got clear nail varnish here. Um, this is gel polish top coat, pilfered from my wife's. Um, nailed varnish draw. So before we apply that I'll just make sure that everything is spread out so we're effectively making a, a rock hard varnished fly here. Um, we're going to apply our lacquer to it. Nice even coat, make sure that it's all coated. This is better than probably some of the UV resins that you can get for this job because it helps maintain that separation that you've put in with the tinsel. And there we have our skinny buzzer. Now for our second fly we're going to move up the water column a little bit. So we're going to go for our emerger. So it's a very similar fly to tie to the, to the other one that we've just done, the skinny buzzer. So the main difference is obviously we've got this big sugar lump, they call it, at the top, uh, which is made from booby cord. So what we're going to do is tie the, the thorax of the fly first, and then we're going to tie the booby cord in for the sugar lump, and then we're going to wrap, wrap a collar around that to finish with some dubbing. 
So uh, that, again, this just sits in the surface film. Um, you'll quite often see trout just, just tailing over. You'll see the, the dorsal fin and the adipose and the tail just, just plip over the top. You might think the topping, but actually what they're doing is feeding in the surface film. And these are the sorts of flies you need to be using on those cases. So away we go. We're just going to start off by catching our thread in. Just work our way down again, touching turns to the bottom of the hook. There we are, just slightly around the bend, like me. Um, right then, so the next stage is we need to take some of this stuff. Now this is flashy boo. Obviously because it's sitting in the surface film, um, what we want to happen is for this to be as light as possible so it doesn't sink. It needs to float. So I prefer to use this for putting tinsel on for, for floating flies or dry flies because it's very, very light. It's made out of sort of polythene film really with a, a gold colour to it. So all I do Just pinch wrap that in there and then we'll start to work our way back up just to make sure that everything's all trapped in place. Right then, now we've got that in, just trim off the excess, work our way back up to roughly where our um, sugar lump's going to be. Right then, so next bit is our sugar lump itself. So we've got some booby cord here. What I like to do for these is to just cut a little bit of a taper in there as you can see, so that when we hold it in place, we can trap it like so. And then as we work down to form the shape of the body, just keep realigning that. It tapers down to nothing. Don't worry too much about coverage. Just make sure you get it well trapped in at this stage because your collar that you're going to put in with your dubbing will cover up this tying thread. So it's more important to, to cover the lower down end of the taper. Because obviously this bit is the bit that's going to have the tinsel wrap around it. So we'll just make sure we work down to there, work our way back up to where the tinsel is going to end, which is about here. Like that. Just check that for position and then we'll start to counter wrap our tinsel around. It's good this stuff because it's flat as well. It does lay flat to the hook. Sometimes it doesn't really want to go where you want it to go. But we're all good, I think. So, one more. And we'll just do another couple of turns with our tying thread, just to catch that in, trap it all off, lock it off, trim that. Final stage here is our dubbing. So this is what they call funky hair, it's a product by fun Funky Fly Tying. Um, I bought this for doing pike flies. Um, you only need a very, very small amount of this stuff. So you can see um, what we're going to do is dub this around the thread. So I'm going to take a length of about three inches. I'm going to extend my tying thread a little bit, wet my fingers. Take our stuff, our tying, dubbing stuff. Start to tease it in. Always roll one way, otherwise you'll end up un unwrapping it. 
So what we're trying to do is create a yarn around the thread. What I'm going to do is give it one wrap and that will tie in the ends of these fibres. And then it will allow us to build our wraps up a bit easier. So that's created as our yarn. What I'm going to do now is start to build this collar just behind that sugar lump. So use up all this dubbing that we've just tied in. And what this will do, you can take some of it off after, is create this sort of fluffy... Um, hackle if you like that will hang in the surface film of the water just below that sugar lump which is the main source of buoyancy for the fly so I'm going to, just going to go a couple of turns in front with our tying thread and then one behind again a couple behind just to position that sugar lump so it stands up um, proud of the hook and then we've, we've virtually done now it's just a whip finish so I'm going to do two whip finishes one, two, three. For this second one, I'm just going to take a little bit of this clear varnish. Apply it to our tying thread. Small amount. And that will help glue everything in place. Do our whip finish again. One, two, three. Four. Some really long hairs here, so I'm just going to tidy these up a little bit. There we are. That's our second fly, our suspender buzzer, or our emerger. Our final pattern of the day. is the shipman's buzzer. So as I say, you fish this almost like a dry fly. So we've got slightly different dubbing material on this. This is seals fur on here. Um, so this will float quite readily. You just need to gink it up nice and high. Um, and then it'll sit there in that top film for you. So take another hook. These camera sand hooks are, are ideal for this. Um, these B400s, you need quite a fine wire hook um, because as I say this, is, this needs to float and if you go for a, a pattern that's a bit thicker you've got no chance, it doesn't matter how much gink you put on it's never going to float so we'll start our tying thread on Touching turns down to the hook, the eye of the, the bend of the hook. And we're just going to go sort of level with where the barb is on the hook. That's that. Cut off the excess. Right. To form the breather tubes, you need some white antron. So you don't need very much. Section, section like that is plenty. Um, try and even it out. We will trim these later, so it doesn't matter if it looks a bit silly at the moment. And lock that in place. So that's locked at the bottom. At the same time, we're going to tie in a section of flashaboo, just a one strand. Wrap that in. Just make sure everything's out of the way. Give it a little trim. And then we're going to work our tying thread back up and then back down again. This is really just to lock the Antron in place. We don't want it going everywhere as you can see it does when we do our dubbing. It can be a little bit unforgiving this Antron. Alright then, that's got that. Just 
make sure that we've got it close enough to the tip. Yeah, leaving probably about a mil in front of the eye of the hook, like that. So we're going to work our body back down. Doesn't have to be too neat here because you're going to put quite shaggy dubbing on it. You just want to cover up some of that antron so that it doesn't show through. Come down to where the end of our tying thread is. Right, this is our seal's fur. Now it's quite coarse fur, so it can be a little bit difficult to, to form into a dubbing. Um, I'm just going to use the standard dubbing method of dubbing it onto one thread without trying to split my thread here. So I'm just going to lick my fingers, wet the thread, just to try and give this dubbing something to grip onto. Start at the top. You have to nip quite hard actually just to get this yarn going. And gradually tease it backwards so we get in there with this. It's just starting to form our yarn for us. We'll slide that up and we'll do a couple of turns just to lock the end fibres in and then we can dub further down and spread it out. There we are. That's it, we've got it going now. Try and incorporate the rest of these fibres in there. That's it. Lovely. Always go one way, because if you go the other way and sort of rub your fingers like that, you'll end up undoing your, your dubbing. And you don't want that. Make sure our rib material's out of the way. Then it's just a case of wrapping our dubbing up to just behind where our antron is, our white at the front. Just enough, there we are. That's lovely. So we do our rib. Counter wraps, gradually working it through dubbing material till we get to the front twice around three times around just to lock that in place trim off our material there I'll give it another couple of turns just to form a bit of a head remembering to leave space there and what I'm going to do is whip finish this behind the antron here again. So whip finishing tool. One, two, three. Same technique. A little bit of cement on the tying thread there. Way too much. can do now. Final whip finish again. One, two, three. There we are. We'll just cut our tying thread. Finishing touch to this is just to cut your breather tubes to the desired length. So what I'm going to do is cut these probably about a quarter of the hook, overall hook length. One there. One there, like that. One errant fibre there. <clears throat> Final comparison versus our original. You can see the one I've done is a bit shaggy, which is probably a good thing. You can take some of these guard hairs off if you want. But that'll float. Gink it up, it'll float for a long time. <clears throat> keep reapplying your gink. Right, I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction into how to tie some buzzers. Um, I hope you try them yourself, um, get out there and fish them, and have some success with them. So I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing so that you'll get some more of this stuff going on. Um, fairly new to the time video, so I um, hope you enjoy it.
Thanks for watching.